Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers and welcome to How Do I? In this series, we're going to look inside the computer case. In this particular episode, we're going to take a tour of the computer case first of all. So if you have a desktop computer, a PC specifically, you'll have a case kind of like this. might not have the window. It'll be just more or less a, uh, a big box that uh, you put underneath your desktop or on top of the desktop and has all of the computer guts inside. So the uh, first thing you need to do in order to do your own tour of the case is to find a way to open it up. So the uh, way you open up a case will depend largely on the type of computer you have. Some of them have a latch on the back. Some of them just have screws. So this one right here has screws on the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those two out and then we can slide the side panel off. Now you can see inside the case. And the first thing we want to take a, a look at is the motherboard. Now the motherboard is called the motherboard because everything else in the system attaches to it. So on the motherboard, the most important thing on a PC is the processor, and the processor is where all the magic happens. Now for the most part, the processor will be found behind this gigantic fan right here. The uh, fan is a cooling device and it pulls heat away from the processor because the processor gets very hot as it uh, crunches all the numbers doing your everyday tasks. Even, even something as simple as surfing the web, it does generate heat because a bunch of electrons are going through the processor. Next to the processor, typically we have the RAM. The RAM is the memory. It holds short-term memory uh, for your uh, system. Everything that you're doing right now goes in through there. Most systems accommodate uh, at least two sticks. Some old, old ones may accommodate one. Uh, some of them accommodate up to four. It'll depend on the size and shape of your motherboard and the desktop machine. And next to the RAM, we have the hard drive. Now, the location may differ depending on your case. In this case, we have one right beside the RAM. Now, the hard drive is your long-term storage. So when you put Windows on your machine, that's where it goes. It goes on the hard drive. When you put a program on there, it goes on the hard drive. And when you save your files, it goes on the hard drive. When you open the files and start working with them, it loads them temporarily into the memory and then puts them back on the hard drive. But the hard drive is where all of the long-term storage happens so that when you shut down your computer at the end of the day, you still have that information on your computer. Whereas the RAM, when you shut it down at the end of the day, it all wipes out and goes empty. Now just on top of the hard drive, in this particular case, we have the DVD-ROM drive. And those are often right next to each other on computers because they often share a cable that goes all the way to the motherboard. Also at the top of the case on most machines, but on the other side at the back, we have the power supply. And the power supply is what generates all the power for your system. In through the back, you have the, uh, the power cable that you plug into the wall. It goes into the power supply. The power supply converts it into a form that the inside of the computer can use. Each of the parts inside here actually uses much lower power than actually comes out of the wall, so it has to convert it. At the bottom here, underneath the power supply, we have all of the add-in cards. Now, what you have will depend on the model of your system and what all is in it in terms of specs. We've got a video card at the top on ours, we've got a sound card below, and we've got a few USB uh, converter cards. In this particular system, you may not have the video card or the sound card. Those may be integrated right onto the motherboard, so you may not even see those there. But uh, if you do have add-in cards, they will be there, and then you'll be able to access them through ports on the back of the system. So you'll have access to the sound ports, you'll have access to the video port uh, for connecting your monitor, and so on. On the back of this system, uh, you'll see a bunch of connectors. These are attached directly to the motherboard. This will be on older systems, things that would attach your keyboard and your mouse using the old PS2 style connectors. Most newer machines have nothing but USB. You'll see uh, Ethernet ports on there if you have them, parallel ports for old printers potentially, although those are tending to disappear these days. And you'll also see in a growing number of cases for lower end systems anyways, you will see the sound connectors on there and a lot of times you'll also see the video connectors on there so connecting your monitor directly to the motherboard and on the front of the case you have the most important thing of all for getting the computer up and running and that is your power button press it and the computer should turn on next to the power button there's usually also a reset button and uh, the reset button is for those rare occasions when the computer freezes up or is not working at all and you can't actually shut it down through the traditional means, you can just press the reset button and it will fire itself down and then fire itself right back up immediately. Anyways, that's a tour of the outside and the inside of the computer case. 
Don't forget to check the other parts in the series where we'll look at some of those parts inside the computer in greater detail. Thank you.